the perfect Son of God in all his innocence. You're walking in the dirt with you and me. Oh, he knows what living is. He's acquainted with our grief. Man of sorrows and son of suffering. Oh, blood and tears, how can it be? There's a God who weeps, there's a God who bleeds. Oh, praise the one who would reach for me. Hallelujah to the Son of Son. Welcome each one of you to the Good Friday service this evening. It's a pleasure to have you here. Tonight we're going to be reading scripture and singing songs. Um, the scripture is going to lead us right up to the death of Jesus. And my prayer, and I know the prayer of this group on stage, is that as scripture is read and as you sing, that the Holy Spirit will reveal something about Jesus Christ to you. That, that hasn't been revealed to you. I'm praying for that fresh revelation of Jesus Christ and who he is to each one of us this evening. He walked among us. He lived a sinless life. He was the great high priest. Hebrews says it this way. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who ascended into heaven, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. So I know many people have come into this place with need, with hurt, with pain. Jesus knows. Jesus walked this earth. So as we sing, as we, as we read scripture, I just want to remind you of that fact. That Jesus knows, and even much more than that, he saw to the other side. Mm -hmm. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father. And he's praying for you right now. He's interceding on your behalf. On, your, on behalf of your circumstance. He's interceding to the Father that something would be formed in you that is great and glorious and worthy of his name. So let's continue to sing. 
about the freedom, about the healing, about the perfection that is Jesus and his work on the cross. Your cross, my freedom, your stripes, my healing, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God in heaven, your blood still speaking, your love still reaching, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God in heaven, your cross, my freedom, your strife, my healing, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God in heaven, your blood still speaking, your love still reaching, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God in heaven, your cross, my freedom, your strife, my healing, all praise, King Jesus, glory to God in heaven, your blood still speaking, your
tonight we want to invite you into a worship that looks really free. So whatever that looks like for you, if that looks like sitting, if it looks like standing, if it looks like being on your knees, whatever it looks like, we want to invite you to do that. Tonight, um, I feel the Lord really wants to just meet with you. He wants to meet with you. Like Andrew said, there's divine appointments in this room. He has something to say to you. He wants to meet with you. We're going to take communion a little bit later. As we do these things, we continue to worship tonight. I just pray that you would allow yourself to just be free and to obey the Spirit and to whatever that looks like. Um, not for anybody else, um, but for Him. So um, we're going to sing this chorus one more time. And if we could just, whatever we brought, we just extend our hands and say, Okay, Lord, I want to give this to you. I'm going to let you have it. I'm going to let you have this. And we're going to consecrate. I'm going to commit this night to you, to your presence. I'm going to hold space for who you are tonight. If we can just hold out our hands and sing that one more time, and we continue to move on. Worthy. first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, my appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him one after the other, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. And Jesus answered, You have said so. And while they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. As we prepare to take communion, if you still need to get the elements, they'll find those at each of the doors, if you need to get those. And to prepare, I'm going to read a meditation from Henry Nouwen, and then I'm going to read a prayer that he wrote about Good Friday and communion. Under Your Cross by Henry Nouwen. I am looking at you, Lord. You've said so many loving words. Your heart has spoken so clearly. Now you want to show me even more clearly how much you love me. You stand up and invite me to the table. As we are eating, you take bread, say the blessing, break the bread and give it to me. Take and eat, you say. This is my body given for you. Then you take a cup and after giving thanks, you hand it to me saying, this is my blood 
the blood of the new covenant poured out for you. Knowing that your hour has come to pass from this world to your Father, and having loved me, you now love me to the end. You give me everything that you have and are. You pour out for me your very self. All the love that you carry for me in your heart now becomes manifest. You wash my feet and then give me your own body and blood as food and drink. Oh Lord, how can I ever go anywhere else but to you to find the love I so desire? Every time you celebrate the communion and receive the bread and the juice, the body and the blood of Jesus, his suffering and his death become a suffering and death for you. Passion becomes compassion for you. You are incorporated into Jesus. You become part of his body and in that most compassionate way are freed from your deepest solitude. Through communion, you come to belong to Jesus in the most intimate way to him who suffered for you, died for you, and rose again so that you may suffer, die, and rise again with him. Oh, dear Lord, what can I say to you? Is there any word that could come from my mouth, any thought, any sentence? You died for me. You gave all for my sins. You not only became man for me, but also suffered the most cruel death for me. Is there any response? I wish that I could find a fitting response. But in contemplating your holy passion and death, I can only confess humbly to you that the immensity of your divine love makes any response seem totally inadequate. Look at me, just let me just stand and look at you. Your body is broken, your head is wounded, your hands and feet are split open by nails. Your side is pierced. Your dead body now rests in the arms of your mother. It's all over now. It's finished. It's fulfilled. It's accomplished. Sweet Lord, gracious Lord, generous Lord, forgiving Lord, I adore you. I praise you. I thank you. You have made all things new through your passion and death. Your cross has been planted in this world as the new sign of hope. Let me always live under your cross, O Lord, and proclaim the hope of your cross unceasingly. Amen.
Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to him, he said to them, sit here while I go and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My Father, if it's possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet, not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and he found them sleeping. Couldn't you keep, met, keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken from me, unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away one more time. And he prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. And while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. He said, the one I kiss is the man, arrest him. So going to greet Jesus at once, Judas said, greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, do what you came for, friend. Then the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him. For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I cannot call on my Father 
and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that say it has to happen this way? In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, am I leading a rebellion that you have come with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple courts teaching and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Would you bow your heads with me? Jesus, we feel the weight of this tonight. Thank you for your willingness to submit your power, your authority, your throne, God. Submit it and allow, allow us to betray you, to desert you, to fall asleep on you. so that you could redeem us, God, in our sin and in our condition. We're so thankful. Thank you that in the moments when we are crushed by loneliness and grief and sorrow and betrayal, that you are a friend to us, that you're never sleeping, you've never abandoned us, Lord. And you were arrested so that we could be free and so that we could have you as our friend in those moments when we need you. And we thank you tonight. We thank you for that. For anyone in this room who's experiencing isolation or loneliness or betrayal, maybe they feel like you've fallen asleep on them. Lord, that, let the reality of Gethsemane just meet us right now. That you said, not my will, but yours so that we could have life. And Lord, I pray that you would just forgive us. Forgive us for the times that we desert you, that we're scared, that we don't trust, that we take matters into our own hands, that we draw our swords and we fight. Thank you that you would surrender everything to the will of God so that we might know you. And so God, this, this terrible moment, if you could redeem that, God, just let us, let our faith rise that you could redeem, you can redeem the terrible moments that the people in this room might be living through even now. Help us to give you praise and honor and glory in whatever we walk through, following your example as you sought to glorify your Father, even when it was crushing, even when you were tormented and sorrowful to the point of death, Lord. If anyone in this room feels like that, God, let them know that, that you understand, and that you're with them. So we worship you. It's in Jesus' name we pray.
heart and flesh may fail The earth below give way But with my eyes, with my eyes I'll see the Lord Lifted high on that day
early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people made their plans how to have Jesus executed. So they bound him and led him away, handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed them, saw that Jesus was condemned, he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders. I have sinned, he said, for I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us, they replied. That's your responsibility. So Judas threw the money into the temple, and he left. Then he went away and hanged himself. The chief priest picked up the coins and said, It's against the law to put this in the treasury, since it is blood money. So they decided to use the money to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why it has been called the field of blood to this day. Then what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet was fulfilled. They took the 30 pieces of silver, the price set on him by the people of Israel, and they used them to buy the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, don't you hear the testimony they're bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release, Barabbas or Jesus, who's called the Messiah? For he knew that it was out of self-interest that they had handed Jesus over to him. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with this innocent man. For I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who was called the Messiah, Pilate asked. They answered, crucify him. Why, what crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, his blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But he had Jesus flogged, and he handed him over to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium, and they gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand. Then they knelt in front of him and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him. They took a staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes back on and they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed a written charge against him. This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads, saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you're the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests and the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. 
He's the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the rebels who were crucified with him also heaped insults on him. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for taking that journey to the cross for us. You didn't have to do it, but you chose to. Lord, we can never imagine what it was like to carry the sin of the world, the shame and the guilt on your shoulders as it was crucified along with you. We don't know what it's like to have the Father turn his eyes away because he could not look upon sin. But Father, we do know that you broke the chains of sin and death that day, and we thank you for it. Pray, Lord, that you will just open our hearts and our minds to allow us to walk into the holiest of holies now that the curtain is torn from top to bottom and come directly to the throne of grace being washed in the blood because of what you did for us on that cross that day. We thank you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. How deep the Father's love for us how vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing the father turned his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory behold the man upon a my sin upon his shoulders ashamed i hear my mocking voice call out among the scoffers it was my sin that held him there until I cannot 
paid my ransom. Man of sorrows, what From noon until three in the afternoon, darkest, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lemma sabatani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge he filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. Many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. 
Oh, Jesus, Son of God, we're so grateful for your work, for your faithfulness to your mission, your faithfulness even unto death, even unto a horrible sinner's death. You are the spotless lamb and you died on a cross for the sins of us all. You held every sin, past, present, future. And when the work was finished, you cried out with a loud voice and you gave up your spirit. And what power was released on the earth in that moment? power that tore the veil from top to bottom that that did the work that you wanted to accomplish from the very beginning that was to to open up the holy of holies that your presence would be able to dwell among your people again that's what it is that you want from us you just want relationship god And I pray that we would realize that in this moment. You're just seeking relationship with us. You invite us into that every day, each and every moment. You tore the veil for relationship with us. We're so thankful for that power, that power that was released, that bought us You purchased men for God with your death on the cross. So we say, hail the king of the Jews in the truest sense. We say, hail to the everlasting one. We say, hail to the firstborn among the dead. To the lion of Judah. how we praise your name. There was a moment when the lights went out When death had claimed its victory The king of love had given up his life. The darkest day in history. There on a cross that made for sinners. For every curse his blood atoned. One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake And the veil was torn Oh, what sacrifice was made as the heavens
Now there was a man named Joseph, a member of the council, a good and upright man who had not consented to their decision and action. He came from the Judean town of Arimathea and he found, and he himself was waiting for the kingdom of God. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body. Then he took it down, wrapped it in linen cloth and placed it in a tomb cut in a rock one in which no one had yet been laid. It was preparation day, and the Sabbath was about to begin. The women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. Dear Lord, as we leave here tonight, we ask that you continue to let us feel the weight of everything that happened on Good Friday. Let us sit in the tension of the suffering you endured for all mankind. Lord, we, we don't deserve it, we didn't deserve it, but you suffered on our behalf knowing that we would still continue to sin and live less than perfect lives. May we hold tight to the grace that you so unconditionally give us while remembering the sacrifice that gave us that grace. And may we search and examine our hearts and look for ways to further honor and revere you for everything that you have done for us. And most importantly, Lord, may we cling to the hope that Sunday morning brings. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.